Extreme weather conditions are gripping the nation with flooding in Queensland and sweltering heat wave in Victoria and South Australia. International climate change expert Professor David Caroli says this weather pattern of hot and wet in the north but dry in the south is likely to become more common. Professor Caroli is the lead author of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change and he joins me now in Melbourne studio. So, Professor Caroli, why are we seeing such extreme weather conditions around the nation? Well, as everyone has uh, got used to, we have very variable climate in Australia with some years being hotter, some being colder, some being wetter and some being drier. What we're seeing over the last 50 years and over the last 100 years is a change in this pattern of extremes with more hot and more wet extremes in northern Australia and more hot and more dry extremes in southern Australia. And that pattern is exactly what we would expect from climate change due to increasing greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. So you would say that this is, this is evidence, these patterns are evidence of uh, climate change due to greenhouse gas emissions? Uh, that's correct. Um, what we can't rule out as yet is that they might be due to natural climate variability. They're certainly not outside the range of possibilities, but what we're seeing is changes that are entirely consistent with what we would expect from human-caused climate change. More hot extremes and more wet extremes in northern Australia and more hot extremes and generally drier extremes in southern Australia, although of course in southeast Australia it's been very wet for the last 12 months. And of course we're seeing also extreme swings in weather in the northern hemisphere. Is that uh, to be expected along with what we're seeing here? Uh, yes, it is. In fact, we've seen uh, in this last year, the last 12 months, uh, record uh, heat waves in Russia, particularly in Moscow, which set a new record for uh, heat wave and hot extremes. And almost at exactly the same time, we saw record flooding in Pakistan, uh, probably the worst natural disaster ever in the Northern Hemisphere. Would you say that there, are, there is more wild weather than to come? Uh, well, it depends on how you define wild weather. We've always had wild weather in the past. But yes, well, I guess the, the more frequent wild weather, yeah. uh, uh, what you're, you've indicated is, is the yes. change. Yeah. Yes. So there will certainly be some examples of wild weather, particularly cold extremes, which will become less common. But we will expect more hot extremes, more heat waves, more droughts, and also more intense rainfall and flooding events uh, will become much more common in the future due to human caused climate change. Now, as you mentioned that this is, you know, evidential, uh, this is evidence that there is climate change due to greenhouse gas emissions. Do you think that we have, have reached the tipping point or is there, is there something that, you know, we can do to just try and reverse this? Well, Describing what we're seeing now as a tipping point is probably an exaggeration. We're seeing uh, some quite uh, large increases in the frequency of extremes, but we don't know whether there's been a tipping point or not. In fact, we probably won't know if we've crossed a tipping point until about 20 years after that tipping point is passed. But you asked also whether there's something we can do about it. And yes, we do know exactly what needs to be done to slow down climate change. We know that we have to reduce human emissions of greenhouse gases uh, from burning fossil fuels, from land clearing uh, and other industrial activities. So we do know what has to be done to slow down climate change and slow action is being started, but it isn't enough to slow down the rate of climate change. And of course there are the climate change deniers that, you know, just subscribe to the fact that, that it isn't actually happening, it isn't man-made. Uh, what do you say about that? Well, I've been involved in looking at the evidence for climate change in assessing the causes of the observed climate change, not only in Australia but around the world. And we look at a mon uh, multitude of different possible causes, including natural climate variations, uh, increases in sunlight from the sun, uh, increases in cosmic rays from the sun. And none of those can explain the observed patterns of climate change that we've seen over the last 50 and over the last 100 years. The uh, only explanation of the observed changes across the planet in terms of the patterns of temperature change is the increase in greenhouse gases from human emissions. Professor Caroli, what do you suggest that the Australian government can do in order to, to tackle what we're seeing at the moment? 
Well, the Australian govern, government has already got a policy of reducing greenhouse gas emissions, and what is needed is uh, national action, not only on uh, reducing greenhouse gas emissions through voluntary measures, but what we need is uh, action to set a price on carbon to provide a signal to industry that uh, dumping waste from burning fossil fuels, dumping carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, uh, is not acceptable in the same way as dumping waste in the streets or dumping waste into rivers is also unacceptable. Dumping waste from burning fossil fuels should be unacceptable in the atmosphere and there should be a cost associated with that. If it's so obvious that uh, you know, we're experiencing climate change from you know, man-made climate change, why has it been so difficult to gain traction on this issue and to see some sort of change? Uh, well, it depends whether you mean see some sort of a change in terms of the climate. Uh, if we look at the patterns of climate change, uh, this year, 2010, will set a record high global average temperature. The decade of the 2010s has set a record high global temperature in terms of instrumental observations. So yes, we know that global average temperatures have increased. We can look at the patterns of those changes with more warming in winter than in summer, more warming in night than in day, and those are exactly the patterns that we expect from increasing greenhouse gases. The difficult part is why has there been no political action or perhaps why has the political action been limited and that is hard to understand. I'm not a politician. The scientific evidence is extremely clear and every, every major scientific body, every major scientific professional society involved with uh, climate and related sciences has agreed with the conclusions that the climate is changing, that the Global temperatures have increased over the last hundred years and most of that warming is due to emissions of greenhouse gases from human activity. We also know how to solve that and that is to reduce emissions but that requires uh, political action, it requires business action and it requires community action and that's where they, there have been delays or inaction and perhaps that is because of vested interests.